My name is Morgan Klinkowski and this is my story. I was 19, it was October 13th and 2014 and it was a guy that I'd kind of been dating a little bit. I'd been on one or two dates with him and we had just been talking and he came over to do homework with me that night and we started kissing and he had asked if I would be willing to go all the way and I said no I don't want to and from then it proceeded to be fairly violent and he didn't listen and the worst imaginable took place and after that I was so alone. I threw away my clothes, I bleached out, cleaned out all the messes and the blood. I think I was in a state of shock for almost two weeks and then I had an anxiety attack at work and I passed out and my friend found me and she was like, what's going on? Like, What happened? And I finally was like, I, I told her. She was the first person I told and I'd waited two weeks and then from then I went to the doctor and they found some damage and I was sent to Savvy, which is a sexual assault and violence place on campus you can go to to re receive help. And that's when I feel like the true battle started. I wasn't believed even there because I'd waited too long to go tell someone and she was like, well, like, if you want to report it, you can, but you know, do it anonymously. And so I did, I reported him anonymously and the university didn't do anything. For the next 10 months, he proceeded to stalk me and follow me and my sorority I was in threatened to kick me out if I said anything. The university double charged me and I paid thousands of dollars in tuition that I didn't need to pay and the girls were really mean. They'd send me these like horrible texts saying that I was just a slut and I was a whore and I didn't deserve attention or love or things like that and um, that was the hardest part. Like that was the worst and I didn't want my family to know because I felt disgusting. For weeks after the event I had all these bruises down my back and up around my neck and people just were like thought I was making them up that I was doing them to myself. I was sitting at home one day, I finally moved home for the summer and I get a text saying he did it again. Not even 30 minutes went by, I went straight to the police station and I walked in, I didn't tell anyone just by myself and I went and told the whole story for the first time. Just praying that someone would believe me because no one had. And so I told the police officer and he finally believed that he believed me and that was the biggest blessing ever. I spent three hours on the stand telling my story to my dad, to my rapist, to the court, to the judge, to random people, to people who supported my rapist and who supported his family and it was, it was traumatizing to say the least. All these text messages that girls from my sorority had said about me, I had to read aloud to my family. And they were things like, Morgan's a whore and she's a slut and she just wants attention and she'll sleep with whoever. And none of those things were true. After that, I walked out and I couldn't hold myself anymore. And my dad carried me out of the courtroom that day. It took about a year and a half of those court experiences and healing and cutting out negative experiences and therapy and I took, I traveled a lot by myself. Just a lot of places where I could just go and be alone. It was a rough couple years and then I started to change and I started to realize that I was strong and I am beautiful and I am capable of anything, of overcoming anything and so is every other woman out there. I own my own nonprofit business called Strong, Beautiful, Capable and it raises scholarship money for victims of sexual assault, helping them go back to school. I wanna open a resource center a full-blown resource center where victims can come in and become survivors. They can learn to recognize their strength and feel their beauty and understand that they're capable of, of so much. In 2015, I told my mom, I was like, Mom, I 10 months ago I was raped. And she didn't say anything. She just looked me dead in the eye and she said, Morgan, you're so strong and you're beautiful and you're capable of getting through this. And she told me that throughout the entire court process, which took about a year and a half, almost two years. I just always had those words in my head, always being told that, and then I was running a Spartan race, actually, and I fell down. Like, I totally just tripped and fell, it's holding this big log, and the words came to my mind, like, okay, Morgan, you're strong enough to finish this, you're beautiful, and you're capable. You can do this. It's time to get up, finish this race, and go help other people, and it's like, it hit me like a brick wall. Every woman has their own inherent strength, and if I can help them find that, then that's what I want to do. I designed the logo, which was a lotus with the word strong, beautiful, capable over top. Then I started, I designed a shirt and just a t-shirt with the lotus on the side and people started buying it. And I started talking more about 
my story and kind of what had happened to me 2014 and how I wasn't believed and I wasn't listened to and I was bullied about it and I was shut down and pushed away and how I'd come back and I just started designing little things and posting about it and then all of a sudden I realized that it could become something so much bigger than me and in January of 2018 I got approved to be an official business in the state of Utah and it's just starting to take off. There's so many different directions I can go with it.